Hi folks, uh, we are back. Uh, David here from Edinburgh Endodontist. Uh, today we're going to discuss uh, intrusive luxations or intrusions. Uh, in these injuries, um, you will observe a displacement of the tooth axially into the socket and almost always uh, get uh, the intralveolar fractured due to the wedging effect um, of, of the, this type of injury. But it really depends on uh, the degree and severity of intrusion, obviously. Clinically, the incisal edge is more apical and sometimes looks like uh, as if it is fractured. Uh, as you can see in this uh, close-up photographs, that by just looking at it, you may think that the crown is snapped off. So you have a short clinical crown. Uh, gingival margins uh, may be lacerated or disrupted, um, and the tooth is going to be firm and locked in. Uh, although here it's safe that if you tap it, you'll uh, hear high metallic or ankylotic sound, but there's no point in tapping it, so please don't try to tap it, basically. Radiographically, you will detect the loss of PDL as it gets crushed and the tooth forces itself into a socket that is smaller in diameter than the actual tooth. So you will lose the PDL space altogether and you see changes in the position of the CJ in relation to the neighboring bone, neighboring um, crystal bone and the other anatomical structures as can be seen in this radiograph. And that is a good uh, sort of uh, radiograph to show how to detect these things. For example, if you wanna see how much of the tooth is fractured off uh, and the severity, look at the crystal bone, the adjacent tooth, the CEJ of the tooth that is intruded and also the neighboring CEJ, just to work out roughly how much of uh, an intrusion you've got and whether it's a mild or moderate or a severe form of um, luxation, which will help you in the management. In primary teeth, if the apex is displayed labially, and if you recall, uh, you know, with other types of um, luxations, we talked about uh, the importance of uh, the displacement direction and how it may uh, have an impact on the permanent tooth germ. And the fact that primary teeth usually have their apices labially already anyway, but if you think that the, displace of the displacement of the apex is labial, you just leave and monitor. If, however, the uh, apex is displaced platally, consider extraction. In permanent teeth, it depends whether it's mild or severe or whether it's, it, you've got it in a mature tooth or uh, a mature tooth with closed apex. So in an immature tooth with a mild intrusion, which is roughly up to three millimeters, uh, and by immature we mean you know, with an open apex, just monitor the tooth for a few weeks to see if it decides to erupt back. However, if after a good few weeks, there's absolutely no signs of this you know, eruption, try some digital repositioning. And I'll come to tell you how. Uh, we've actually got a video clip on Dental Trauma uh, UK website, but we'll, we'll go through it. Um, but generally speaking, I suggest referral at this point if things are not going back and if you've not done this sort of management before, consider referral because you've got time with these, with these type of injuries. Uh, so if it is mild, if it is uh, an immature teeth, uh, tooth, uh, wait for a few weeks. If there is no sign of uh, eruption, consider referral. Uh, if you're happy to manage it, by all means do so. If you have... Um, mature tooth with a closed apex and just go for repositioning under local anesthetic and then provide splint as a flexible splint for four weeks. In severe intruded teeth up to seven millimeters if you can see it try digital repositioning first soft diet for two weeks normal brushing etc and place a flexible spleen for four weeks. Monitor purple health up to five years and reassure patient regarding the discoloration because that is you know, not unheard of. 
the pulp is likely to become necrotic in these sort of crushing injuries, immature teeth. But then look for uh, your two signs of infection and necrosis and start root canal treatment if you observe two of them. But as I said, generally speaking, with these teeth, they will require root canal treatment. Um, some uh, advice regarding uh, digital surgical repositioning. These are interchangeable terms, but there is actually no surgery involved unless obviously you've completely lost the tooth and there is no sign of it. Um, but there is no cutting or anything like that. So you just need to disimpact the tooth and that is what people refer to as surgical repositioning or digital repositioning. You need to apply gentle forces interproximally with a flat plastic type instrument uh, to be able to disimpact. And I strongly suggest that you go and watch the clinical video on this procedure uh, on Dental Trauma UK website to familiarize yourself. And if you have not done so under supervision, um, I suggest that you refer patients you know, uh, who, who, who may have sustained this type of injury. Uh, but you need to disimpact interdentally a little bit of a movement left and right until, and be careful not to lose the tooth obviously when it pops out of the socket, but gentle manipulation uh, interdentally with a flat plastic type of instrument to get the tooth to bounce back into the socket. Uh, but watch the video clip please uh, to familiarize yourself. You know uh, everything already about splinting. We've talked about it several times and you've watched hopefully the video of it. Uh, if you uh, have watched the previous clips, you know everything about it. Uh, provide a temporary splint first, take a check x-ray. If it is repositioned fully, apply flexible splint for four weeks. Uh, use a stainless steel round ortho wire and composite. Uh, try one uninjured tooth on either side uh, of the, the injured tooth for splinting. So um, here you can see that we've had two injured uh, teeth, uh, the upper lateral and canine. You just try one uh, at a time from, uh, to, to, to disimpact and reposition uh, when you've got multiple teeth try one at a time from a tooth closest to an uninjured tooth. So if you've got several, uh, don't start in the middle. Try the closest to an uninjured tooth. When that is disimpacted and repositioned and temporary uh, splint provided to secure, move to the next one and so on and so forth until you cover all of them. Do not do one bit on one tooth and one on the other and then go back. Do one, finish it, temporize it, move to the next one. And if you've got multiple ones, do not start from the middle. Start from uh, one end and finish the other. And here you can see that that tooth is splinted. It's been, you know, and after a few weeks, root canal treatment has been done, everything back into normal. To monitor, four weeks to remove the splint, and then three, six, 12 months, and annually for five years. Uh, as I said, these teeth are likely to require root canal treatment. To sum up for concussions, reassure patients and monitor. For subluxation, reassure splint for two weeks if it is tender. For extrusive luxation, again, reassure splint for two weeks, that's a flexible one. Lateral luxation, splint for four weeks this time. And uh, for intrusions, it depends if it is mild, allow eruption for a good few weeks. If there is absolutely no sign, go for digital reposition. In severe cases, however, reposition, or if there is no sign of it, it is completely disappeared, uh, then you will need surgical or orthodontic repositioning. But if you are facing something like that, I suggest that you refer the patient. You've got time for it, okay? Present. Uh, thank you very much, folks. Uh, tomorrow we will cover evulsions. Uh, remember to visit Dental Trauma UK website and watch the video clips um, and come back tomorrow for the evulsions. Stay safe. Uh, bye for now.